I'm the underdog with the heroic card. I'm Aaron Jones Jr. I have to keep pushing for my kids. If I give up, what's that leave them with? Nothing. I have to understand that it's bigger than me. That it's not about me when I wake up and go to work. It's not about me when I'm reading and educate myself. It's not about me when I'm practicing my speeches. It's not about me. It's about my family. Hey, 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 you're now tuned in to Underdog Talk. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., the underdog with the heroic heart, and I have conversations with successful underdogs. And today I have a professional boxer mindset coach, Tyler Canning. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a nice four-day weekend for me. I'm a teacher, so I've been off the last few days, so I've been getting some rest, so I'm pretty good. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem. So before we get into today's conversation, our sponsor for today is ChristianDewan.com. I mean, Christian Dewan clothing line is at ChristianDewan.com. If you use the promo code Underdog Talk, you uh, get fifteen percent off. Underdog is spelled U N D E R D A W G uh, Talk, and you get fifteen percent off. We'll have hoodie. We got hoodies, sweatshirts, and t-shirts, but we're gonna have some new hoodies and sweatshirts coming out for the fall. So. Where where was life? What was going on? What were you going through when you felt like there was nothing else going on? Like you was at rock bottom. You was like you felt like you was the real underdog. You didn't really, you know, see what was gonna happen in your future. What was life like? Uh, so when I was a kid, I uh, I was fifteen. I got locked up, um, just doing some bad shit as a kid, and uh, I spent my sixteenth birthday. Um, in jail and uh, uh i was locked up for about three months and i had already been boxing by the time i started boxing at a young age i didn't really take it serious till i was after i got out um i was just basically in a really bad spot you know i wasn't listening to anybody i was going down the wrong running with the wrong people and uh you know coming from wyoming and being a professional boxer it was like before i did it there wasn't wasn't a thing especially the town i came from was a pretty small town or about five thousand people and you know i was told you know oh you're never gonna be able to box and blah blah blah. and and i remember the day i got out i i told my my coach i had him with me and he's my mentor and he helped me through you know really got me to believe in myself and i got out of the jail that day and i went straight to the gym uh and from that point, I basically, that's where I, I feel like I've always kind of been the underdog though, boxing out of Wyoming. You know, I, uh, the first year, I, the first year I was out, I, uh, I, I went in and I got number five at na- five in the nation at nationals. And, uh, from anybody from Wyoming doing that was like, it was, it's nothing, not a thing. So that was a pretty big thing. And then the year following year after that, I ended up winning a national tournament and I won the whole thing was ranked number one in the nation. And it called qualified me to go trial for the Olympics. Um, I lost in the semifinals (laughs) to go to the Olympics, but from that point on, I turned pro and I fought on HBO. I fought all over the world. Um, I'm still fighting. Um, basically, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, pretty much underdog my whole life I think just you know but I, I like I, I like being the underdog to be honest man I you know just it kind of keeps me motivated to work hard so I've used being an underdog to you know help me really push through and train harder than I ever would have understand I love it I'm from a small town too uh it's called Michigan City Indiana so I, I think we, we got more than 5,000 people, but it's a small town. So I definitely understand, like, when you do stuff and it gets nationally known or it's just known outside of your city, it's a big thing that you, you know, that you did that. And then I know, like, other small towns that's close, like, sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, you're not going to do nothing. You know, you're just going to get a job and live around here. And it's kind of like, how are you going to tell me what I'm going to do? So – before uh, you went to jail, before you actually started boxing like professionally at a young age, were you fighting in the streets? Was you laying hands on boys or were you, was it more so you learned how to box 
and then that's how you got into boxing or was it you know you got in a fight in first before you got into boxing uh so i kind of had gotten into boxing at a pretty young age just because my dad um he he boxed and he wanted to you know he wanted me to be a boxer so um i i actually had a punchy bag at my house and i was like six seven years old so i was always kind of training but I mean, I never really took it serious. You know, I you know, went to when you're like seven, eight years old and going to the gym and shit, you didn't really, I mean, I didn't think much of it. I was just kind of going because my dad was taking me. But no, I, I was I was fighting all the time. I was fighting. I got kicked out of my first uh, grade school for fighting. Um, I just, yeah, I was a, a dumb kid. I, I spent a lot, you know, I just... I didn't listen to nobody. I didn't take shit from nobody. And I, I looked for the fights wherever I went. <laughs> that was kind of, um, I don't know. I think I might've took that a little bit from my dad. Cause I, you know, about he's like being the tough guy kind of thing. So I always wanted to, you know, do that shit, but it didn't work out for me back then. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Cause I know sometimes people, uh, I know some kids when I was growing up, they were, you know, they became boxers or they got their hands are registered. And it's like, you can't really fight when your hands are registered, but it's sometimes it's like, it's people that can fight in the streets that actually can box. Cause it's a difference between fighting in the street for that 30 seconds that you see, that seems like forever or that minute or whatever to actually going in the ring and actually going rounds. Like it's, it's not, it's not easy. So I like what you said, though. You did it because your dad, like you going to the gym. It's like, all right, I'm going because my dad's going. I'm not really going for nothing else. And as being a being a dad myself and taking my son to the gym and doing stuff, it's like, does he really go because he wants to or does he go just because it's me? And but eventually, you know, you turned out to be a, a, a good boxer. So eventually, hopefully it rubs off on him, too. So was your dad. From the start, was he like a part of your journey or what? How was that relationship with your dad? Uh, so when I first, uh, my dad was uh, pretty abusive and he was a very, he wasn't a good person at the first part of my life. Um, you know, I watched him abuse my mother and just, I, I watched, I mean, like I remember going to the grocery store and him just getting in fights with people for no reason and shit. Kind of like I, so I seen him doing it and that's kind of, I literally <laughs> did the same thing, which but yeah so it, he right it wasn't good at first i mean you know i always loved my dad and i think you know he really did mean he meant well it just he didn't know how to really show me you know how to be a man like that you know so it wasn't the best with him but once i got out and he seen me starting to take the boxing serious me and him actually we got back together and uh you know, he actually would come help at the gym and he did, he was with us a lot. He, I mean, I remember times like where we didn't have money and we would go, we'd drive to like Salt Lake City or Denver or all around the country. I mean, we'd go to all these places and be sleeping in the car and shit and I'd have to fight the next day. So I did stuff like that all the time with him. So he, he actually did come around and he really did start to be a better um, influence for me. And my, and my coach actually came around when I, he came in around right before I went to jail um, and he was able, he, he was always talking to me, but he was a like crazy old guy. No, I didn't listen to him all at first. I'm like, whatever, dude, you know, but you know, when I got out, he, he's really the one who, who pushed me to be a better person. And he, you know, he changed my life, man. Um, and actually I lost my dad about eight years ago. And then I lost my coach just about, a year and a couple months ago so that's been pretty tough but yeah no they both you know my coach and my dad both helped me a lot to become you know the best fighter i could be and everything that's good i'm sorry to hear that about your dad and uh, your mentor that's good that you had those influences because sometimes young men we don't have those influences we don't have where you know, if somebody doing something positive or doing something, because it could have been like you seen your dad fighting, but then he also took you to the boxing to show you actually what to do and not to actually just go out here and beat people up just to beat people up. But I like what you said. You said you had to sleep in the car and then go fight the next day. How yeah. the hell did you do that? Because I know depending on, well, you said Denver, all these places is cold probably, and then you might not eat. Like, how did you, what, what, what inside you or what 
drove you to like, all right, I'm going to go in this fight. And did you win these fights? Or was it like, I'm losing here because I'm sleeping in the car. We don't got the money. And then I'm going and I'm losing the fight. Or was it like, I'm going to take all my frustration out and whip this dude ass that's in front of me. How did that go for you? Yeah, mostly. I mean, I lost. All right. I lost a couple fights. I mean, I had about 98 amateur fights and I lost about 12 of them. So I were I was um, for the majority of time. Oh, sh- sorry, dude. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> no, but uh, no. For the majority of them, I was winning. Um, you know, I I found from a from a young age, I knew I I knew I had a talent for it. I just you know I didn't take it serious. I I wasn't I didn't take it serious till I got out of jail. But I think me going to jail actually helped me a lot because I really understood like you know oh shit like i'm going down this path like if i don't turn it around um and then like just all the like i had teachers and shit all the time telling me because like i was i was pretty bad kid i was getting in trouble wasn't going to school being a smart ass at school and stuff and i had a lot of teachers like talking down on me saying boxing's bad and i wasn't gonna do shit and so I just, I put all that frustration that I had for everybody. And especially like if I had to sleep in the car the next day, I was like, I'm not fucking losing this fight. Is that we drove for seven, eight hours to get here. We're going to fucking put on a show. So yeah, there was a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of times, you know, and I was always cutting weight too. I cut a lot of weight back, you know, I wouldn't be eating, sleeping in the car. It's cold as shit. I mean, there was a lot of things, but it actually, it made me be the a better man. Like today, like. I'm so thankful I was able to go through that shit because, you know, I I think going through hard times and shit like that really defines the person that you become. So I even now I, I love going through hard. I got I can't say I love going through hard times, but I like, like if I got shit going on and it just builds me into a better person. So, yeah, definitely. I definitely understand that it's uh, similar with me, like people doubting that I could play basketball because I uh, got short arms. It's like, all right, let's, let's, let's get on this court and see. And it's like, I I get where you like, uh, we not going this place. We not driving all these hours and I'm going to lose. Cause you're going to have to hear it on the way back. Like it's not where you just go and you going to go and fight. You go, if I, if, if my son got me driving and we, and he lose, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be a long drive on the way back. So yeah. uh, I definitely understand that. So, as time got on, um, did you have any uh, injuries? Have you had any, like, uh, moments where you were like, I don't think I want to fight anymore? I haven't ever had that. I mean, I when I very – actually, I, I did get a, to a time where I actually got with my girlfriend now, and I actually had stepped away from the gym for a little – like, about a year. I didn't train or nothing. I was like, man, maybe I just want to have a family and shit. And I went for about a year and then I was like, I can't do it. I can't not. And and I run a gym and shit now. I'm like, I'll always, I'll always be a part of the boxing. I think um, it's just in my blood to do it. I can't not do it. But, um, and I, and just recently this year, I actually tore my bicep in the middle of a fight um in march yeah in march 19th i was in the middle of my it was like my seventh or eighth pro fight and i i hit the guy and i tore my bicep when i hit him and i didn't really realize i had torn it and i fought i kept fighting and then like i i dropped him and i stepped back and i looked at my arm and my bicep was like into my like shoulder like it was it was bad and i ended up I looked at my arm and I said, because I don't have any quit in me. I'd have fucking fought the whole fight, the whole fucking six, eight rounds. I would have fought with a one arm. I looked at my arm. I said, I got to finish this shit. And I went out and I knocked him out one handed. <laughs> and then, and then another kind of cool story with that. I actually fought three months later after I tore it. I, I got surgery. Like I was pretty lucky. I got in, got surgery. And the same shit. I had doctors tell me, Oh man, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to box again. Like, this is a serious injury. And I told him, I said, fuck that. And I was literally in the gym. That's right. I was like in my cast at the gym doing what I could do. Cause like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't just not do anything. And I literally went and fought three months later and just to prove them wrong. Um, I made, I pretty much told the doctor, I said, you're either going to sign this to, 
so I can go fight again, or I'm fucking going to another doctor because I'm not. And he ended up signing me. I literally, the day I got approved was the day I fought. And I ended up going and I fought and knocked that dude out in the second round. So, um, I just, you know, that's just the, I, I like when people tell me I can't do shit. <laughs> it's just, it, it makes me go harder. So. I, I love it. Uh, I've been in a, not where I'm fighting, but I had surgery, uh, my junior year of high school. So I had to have surgery on my right hand and I love playing basketball. I had, I actually had a metal plate. So at the hospital that is called Shriners, it's a couple of them um, in the U S the one I was at was in Chicago. So they got a basketball court. I see people playing. It's like, man, I see people playing. I'm going to go play. I got this cat. It's an hour after my surgery. I went out there and I played and I won and I never really played with my left hand like that, but I just was figuring, I even, you know, shot a couple of times with my right hand, but it was like, I understand that passion. Like, man, I don't care what y'all talking about. I can't go do nothing. You can't tell me what I can't do. And that's what I want people to get from this, uh, from your story throughout the whole time. You said, People told you you couldn't do something. You went out there and did it. You went out there and knocked somebody out. You went out there and fought. You went out there and made a name for yourself. You took all that anger and all that stuff as a young child and made it, turn it into something good. And that's what a lot of young people have to do. Sometimes, you know, we go through life. We we don't know who we're going to be born to, what our parents going to be like. You know, we could have the Huxtables or we could have, you know, some crackhead people or we could have abuse of people, whatever, but you got to turn that pain into something because we all have some type of purpose. Yep. Your purpose, Like you said, you don't care if you're not boxing, you're going to be in the gym. You're going to be teaching kids. Yep. You're showing them, hey, this is how you do it. And it, that's just part of who you are. And I love how you t- turned your pain into a purpose. So as you've been fighting, um, has it been, have you been able to monetize or is it something that you're still in the beginning stages? Cause I know in every sport, you know, at certain levels, you get paid a certain amount. You sometimes you, you know, you fight for free. Sometimes you get paid a lot. So how, how is that part of boxing going for you? Um, I've been all over the spectrum of getting paid. I mean, I made 600 bucks, my pro debut. And when I fought on TV, I made over a hundred grand. So um it really it it's just depends on the fight and you know i've been doing a lot of stuff here i've been fighting a lot in my my town of casper where i live right now i'm trying to build my record up and so i can get more bigger fights down the road and that's kind of where i'm at now which those don't pay as much but with sponsors and things like that i i um i do pretty good but um yeah i mean it just kind of just kind of depends like i get offers all the time to go you know make a lot of money it's just the fight's a lot harder or, you know you're you just more uh, you know just kind of depends on who you're fighting really is what it comes down to so yep totally understand so that i know that's like wow you get paid your first pro fight 600 then you get a chance to be on tv and you uh and you do it uh, and you get over a hundred grand. I know that was like, what the heck? I know like yep. that, that was like, okay, I can really do this. Cause when you yeah. get, when you're doing something and you'll do it for free, it's cool. But when you actually get that check and you like, oh shit, I can really get paid off doing this. Let me, let me take this serious now rather yep. than just doing it. So I've, uh, I looked at one of your fights uh, earlier today. Um, I seen you, you, you were doing a good job. You were, uh, I think the dude name was Robert Daniels. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and you were, they were like, uh, you know, you was hitting with the combinations. You weren't really trying to knock them out. So, what kind of boxer are you? You know, everybody so, has a certain style. What kind of boxer are you? Um, I think I'm more aggressive, kind of. I mean, I can do both. I I can box and I can brawl. I think I can do both. I just most fights end up I get. I want to just hit them, <laughs> but I, I, my defense is pretty good and I don't get hit all the time either. So I've, I've gotten pretty good to where I'd say I'm like a boxer, boxer puncher. I, I like to go at them, punch them, but I still, I like to use my defense and that fight that you're talking about right there. I was a bare knuckle. I do bare knuckle and boxing. Um, kind of a cool thing about that. That guy was a little bit older, but, um, he actually had three world titles when he was, uh, when he was boxing, but yeah, I kind of retired him, but <laughs> he said I retired him. I was going to ask you like, 
about that because I seen that. I was like, hold on, they don't got gloves. I'm like, what <laughs> is this? this is this is some real street fight. So, uh, so you do both, okay? Yeah, so, I do both. Uh, is it a difference? Like when you're fighting, like, uh, like how is it? What's the difference between doing both of those? So really, the big difference I would say is uh, the with the bare knuckle. Um, it's a lot less. I can't hit as hard because um, you just you you'll break your hand. So you got to be really careful. And there's a lot more cuts. I'd say boxing in general is worse, um, like brain trauma wise, because you have those the bigger gloves. So when you get hit, like it knocks your brain around more. But uh, the difference I'd say and your defense has to be really good in bare knuckle because I mean, as soon as you get, as soon as you get hit, I mean, if you get caught, you don't have to be that hard. And if you get hit clean, it's over. <laughs> so that's the big difference. But um, no, I actually love doing both of them. I haven't had a bare knuckle fight in a while, but I plan on doing that again too. Hopefully, here soon. Um, I really, I really, boxing is my first love though. And that's where, that's the big thing right now. Is, and that's where the money's at. It's in the boxing. So, I mean, it's boxing. If I get a, you know, a good opportunity to go do a bare knuckle, I'll do that too. I, I actually, I was ranked number, they, when they first started bare knuckle, um, the, cause it's pretty new. They, they weren't uh, sanctioning it. Um, and they just started sanctioning it about two years ago. I was ranked like number 10 in the world, but at heavyweight, which I, sh I shouldn't even really be fighting heavyweight. I'm fat, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love both of them, but boxing is my first love and I'll always stick through to that. Understand. So, uh, before we get into talking about like how you became a mindset coach, um, what do you see yourself with box? How old are you first? Uh, and then what do you see? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 30. 30. So I, that's, is that kind of old to not old, but that is that like, where, what, where is that on the age range in boxing? I'd, I'd say it'd be like, toward, I mean, a lot of people peak out in their thirties, but usually most fighters don't go past 35, 36. So I'd say, you know, I have like five to six good years of boxing in me. So I want, I do, I do want to leave with all my senses and everything. So I, I probably doubt I'll fight past 36. That's probably when I'll fully go into like coaching and helping people. So, so, um, being at 30 saying you got about a good five, maybe six years left. What are two of your, bucket list goals uh for boxing that you would that you would want to do before you you know quit boxing and basically be a trainer or however else you're going to you know help others with boxing um i think uh i think i'm very i think i could win a world title that's my big goal i want that's uh, i've been training for it and you know i'm just i got to build my record up and get a couple on the higher level wins which won't be won't be too hard I think at like 175, 168, I'll be able to get a world title. So that's that's kind of my goal, um, and that's basically where I'm I'm heading to. That's my biggest goal is world title. But yeah, so uh, I hope that you get that because um, you, <clears throat> like you said, you're the underdog. Like I like. Like you, you almost got like one of those, uh, you know, the boxing movies where they have the like it's like an underdog. Most boxing movies, underdog story. I feel like you got that. Like you could have like a little Netflix movie on on the boxing, and uh, I hope that you get an opportunity to get in that ring and get you know s several opportunities because you never know what happens when you do get in the ring. So, yep. um. How did you become a mindset coach? What I'm, I'm, I understand your mindset because going through sleeping in a car and having to box or uh, just the different stuff that you have to have because you got to be not physically, just mentally strong too, being a boxer. So how did you become a mindset coach along with boxing? So um, one thing, yeah, when I lost my coach about a year ago, 
you know, I, I was really thinking, you know, cause I love fighting, but I said, you know, I can't fight forever. So I was thinking, man, how could I really, really help somebody, but, you know, still kind of stay around, you know, the boxing and stuff too. I mean, I still run a gym and stuff like that. So I'll always be like that. But I said, I really wanted to find something where I could actually really help people. Cause I feel like my calling is to help people. You know, I'm, I'm, I believe in, I, I believe in God and I'm just, I really, I want to be able to just help people. So about, uh, I'd say about four months ago, I, I took a little course thing and I said, you know, I'm going to do this too. Cause I think I have a lot of good uh, qualities to help people and show people in my life and just show them, Hey man, like you, if you change the way you think about stuff, you can really, you know, make it, you can make it better for yourself. So that's really what got me into it. Um, when I lost my coach and he was such a good mentor helper to me, I said, man, I got to be able to try to do this to people too, you know, and, and I'm good. I do it at the gym too, but I was like, I got to be able to help more people. And that's why I got into the doing it like online and helping people stuff that way. I love it. I love uh, what you said though. You, you had a mentor, you had a coach and a lot of times we don't realize how important because you know growing up you don't really call him a coach you might call him coach because that's you know what he does but like you have a a life coach or a mentor throughout that time that helps you that'll tell you when you're doing stupid shit or when you you know like hey that i don't even know why you did that and i like what you said you wanted to go past just the gym you wanted to go past with helping and that's like with me i help i work at a school so i don't just help people in my class i any kid I see, you know, I try to build bonds with all of them, but I want to be able to travel the world and speak and do those different things. Yep. So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that, not just helping those that are close, but being able to help those all around and having that mindset and just having that coach was able to help you. So who are, who's your like target audience? I know sometimes people have different, you know, people that they talk to, but who, who's your target target audience? Um, I think honestly, I think the biggest, I like to help like athletes, younger, like younger people, um, people like in their teens to early twenties, you know, that want to, you know, really change the way they think about stuff. I think that's my bet, my best on a audience that I can help people with. So that's pretty much who I, I like to work. I, it's not to say I won't work with, you know, somebody older or something. I just, those are the people I feel like I can help the best. So Definitely. And that's that's a good thing because uh, they'll gravitate to you. They'll uh, be like, all right, he seemed cool because a lot of times people think just because they have a title or they're this, that and the third, like kids going to listen to them. Kids want to re- be able to relate to somebody like they want to yeah. see somebody that looks like them. Oh, you got on jewelry. Oh, you got tattoos. Oh, but you do this and that. I can still do this and I can. I can, you know, still. So I love that that you uh, have a young audience. I'm the same way. My audience is like high schoolers, though. Uh, But it's it's, it's a good thing to help out young people, because uh, if you didn't have that mentor, if you didn't, maybe your dad wasn't active. Who knows where you could have went? You could have went left when you, you know, got out of jail. So it's always important to give back. So what is your um, what are your goals just so you just started four months. So within when the when the time frame hits a year, what is your goals for your coaching? In a year, I'd like to have helped at least a hundred people. I mean, I'm I, in the four months I've I've helped about I'd say like thirty people. So I think personally, I think I'll be able to hit a hundred pretty easy. You know, but but the sky is the limit for that too. Like I I think big, and I think you got to have really big goals. You know, I, I I don't know. I read a lot of like Grant Cardone stuff and the 10x rule and just having really, really big goals, because I think the more you think about those big goals and the way you're, you know, it just kind of shit just goes into place. So I like I said, I if I can, I want to be helping millions of people if I can. So Definitely. that's a big goal. And uh, just on the with my coach if i yeah if i wouldn't have had my coach in my life there i have no doubt that i wouldn't be in prison or dead probably right now because yeah i think everybody needs somebody in their life to kind of hold them straight like you know hold them kind of accountable and you know i think i'm just thank god i had him you know to kind of keep me and just make me believe in myself because i know you know from where i was at you know 
like with my mom and stuff, she, she was, she tried to be good too, but she was always chasing guys and stuff. So like put me kind of in bad situations. And I, I don't think she meant to do that either, but like, you know, I didn't have a lot of people that believed in me and my coach stepped in and showed me like, Hey, I believe in you, man. You got the talent, you got this. And I think everybody needs somebody like that in their life. And, you know, like I said, my mom and dad, they didn't just, they didn't know how, like they never had that. So it's, they, they were doing the best they could. So, but. Yeah, I definitely, that, that you said it perfectly. Like you gotta have an example. Like as parents, I understand as a parent now, like there ain't no manual. It ain't no, oh, here you go. You got a child now, here you go. That's what you do. Hell no, it's none of that. It's like, you have to figure it out. So you can understand some stuff, but then some stuff it's like, ah, I can't understand that as a parent. But like you said, you just got to have that one person, just that mm-hmm. one person to be like, hey, I see what you're doing. I, I, I see you got big dreams. And that's all it takes for, especially a young person, yeah. is for one person. to. And it doesn't even have to be somebody famous, rich, anything. It just takes that one person that be like, man, I really, I really see you doing this and doing it big. And you like, really? And now you believe in yourself, you believe in yourself, but it just takes that one person to push you. And like you yeah. said, you, you got to have like a, a coach. You got to have somebody because Michael Jordan has a coach. Oprah has a coach. Denzel has a coach. Like all these people that we look at, they have coaches in their field because they want to get better because you need somebody to see your blind side. You need somebody to yeah. be to, like you said, hold you accountable and keep it a fun- funky with you. Like, hey, man, you're doing yeah. some stupid shit over there. That's not going to help you. That's going to end up you're going to end up over here. And sometimes it's not your friends. It's not your family. It's somebody you meet online. It's somebody you meet at the grocery store. It's somebody yeah. that wherever you, you know, wherever you at, you meet them and they help you out. And sometimes it's a stranger at first. Like, who yeah. is, like, who are you? Like, how do you know yeah. me? And then you keep rocking with them and they help you out. Just like a uh, Rocky, like him and yeah. uh, his guy, like, like, man, who are you? Like, how are you going to tell me this? And that's yeah. the person that you need. The person that'll make you look, you look them upside your head. Like, who are you talking to? And that's the per- that's the kind of person you need because you don't want a yes person. You want somebody yeah. that's going to keep it real with you to help you get better. And it, it's not always about money. It's about being a better person because yeah. uh, you could go out there and you could be a boxer and be a horrible person and come home and smack people around, knock people out just because, you know, you can because you got, you know, the ability to. But yeah. it takes you to be a better person because that's some of the stuff you saw. So. Yeah. Man, I uh, I love your underdog story. I don't know what I'm going to name this yet, but I'm, I always try to think of something that catch people's eye. But before we get into how people can reach you, um, I need three tips. Three tips for people that feel like they're the underdog. They they don't got it going. They they got something, but they don't really know what to do with it. Um, I would say find like a coach or somebody in your life that. I, I feel a lot of the times like parents and like family aren't the best at stuff like this because, you know, they really love you. So they might let you get away with a little bit more stuff. I think you should find a coach or d- even a mentor, or just somebody in your life that's doing, you know, doing good, you know, get around people that are doing it. Um, I'd say too, uh, um, write your goals down every day and you need to get a system for everything you want to do. Uh, And I noticed when I started, I used to not, I mean, I did a lot of stuff without even, you know, writing my goals down, but if I I would think about it every day, but it's really, really good to write your goals down and to have stuff like that.
I don't know what the like I started getting a call and I canceled it and my whole screen. <laughs> it's cool, man. I, I figured that's what it was because you looked and you was like, oh shit. And I was like, it's somebody called. I knew that's what it was. I ain't tripping. I know where to, I know where to edit it at. So it's I, I'm cool. So okay. uh, uh just start. I think you were uh tip number two. You were talking about uh, writing your goals down. So that's where you left off at. Okay. Yeah. So the biggest thing you could do, write your goals down. Don't be, you know, write. I write daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, 10 year goals. I mean, you can't go wrong with writing your goals down. Um, it really does help. And, you know, even just writing them down every day, it really keeps you keeps your mind like you you think about it all the time which you if you really want something you got to be thinking about it all the time you got to be dreaming about it you got to be always wanting to make it right um and then i would say tip three i would say just go for it go for your dreams i you know there's if i wouldn't have kept boxing and i i don't even know where i'd be at right now i have no idea you know, I, I don't listen to everybody that are going to, I mean, nobody's going to know like what you can do. Like, I think more people are getting open to people like going out and doing what they want. But I mean, back, I feel like when I was in high school, like everybody's like, oh, just go to school for t 10 years and go be like a doctor. That's like what everybody, you know, but go for what you're like, just go for it. Like go for your dreams and don't look back. I love it. I love it. They, they're they're simple, practical tips. Like get you a mentor, write your goals down. And when you write your goals, put a date. <clears throat> Excuse me. But put a date on it because I sometimes write a goal and it's like, OK, I'm going to finish this goal in a month. But it's like, OK, I want to finish this goal by the 15th or I want to finish this goal yeah. by whenever. And that's going to push you to get that done. And like you said, writing it down every day or just writing down what you want to accomplish it helps because you're looking at it and you're thinking about it you're like okay how can i get this done oh i need to call such and such oh, i need to do this email or whatever it is that you need to do and then the last thing uh what oh i got the rambling the last thing what was the last tip you said um to just go for it just go for, just it. Go yeah, for just, it yeah just go for it like no matter if you don't got no money no matter if you don't know what what you're doing, just go for it. Do it scared because when you do it scared, right. like it's just like if your if your car breaks down, right? Your car breaks down. You sitting there, you're in the car. People are gonna pass you by, but if you sitting there and you under the hood or you changing the tire, somebody gonna stop and say, "Oh, you need some help." You don't know what you're doing, but you're like, "Okay, let me go out here and try to uh, do it." And yep. that's when you'll get the help that you need. So yep. do it scared. Don't don't wait for somebody. It's never a right time to do anything. Yep, I it's agree. I, go ahead. It, it always falls into place. Like everything I've done is all. It's always worked out. Like it, it just weird. It every if it's meant to happen, it's gonna happen, and it'll all fall into place. Just you know, don't give up because the times that it's hard, it means the times you need to be going harder. So. <laughs> When it's the times when it's hard is the times you need to go harder. That was yeah. going. I'm gonna say that could be your quote. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> unless you got another quote, I'm gonna leave that as that's your quote. When times are harder, you need to go harder. Uh, yeah. How can people reach you? How can they reach you online? How can they check out your fights? Those different things. Um, yes, you can go Tyler Canning. If you put Tyler Canning in, I think uh, basically it'll show up. Uh, on my Instagram and everything, I have my link in there um, to all my things. You can schedule like just a free coach and call with me if you want to. I have all my stuff on there. Um, I think it's, I think I have my link tree in my Facebook too, but I mean, just shoot me a message too. I mean, I, I love talking to people. I love helping people, man. So anybody that, you know, if you just, you're down one day and need somebody to talk to, just hit me up. I'm, I'm here for it, you know. I love it. Appreciate I appreciate you. I definitely gonna have your uh link in the show uh notes. But again, I appreciate you for uh coming on, reaching out to me on uh Facebook. I love your story, how you just never gave up. Um, even though the beginning of life it was kind of rough, it was you know, you didn't know where you was going, but all you needed was that one person to help you turn your life around. So uh 
good luck to you in this in this boxing world because like you said you could take one hit and it could change everything for you um i hope you that you do accomplish that world title um definitely if you have a fight coming up, I definitely want to tune in and watch and see how it's going because I'm going to be rooting for you. I'm going to be talking shit. I don't even care who the other guy is. I know you're going to get their ass. So um, I appreciate you for coming on. Uh, do you have any closing words? Um, Just um, get yourself a coach and go out and get it because it, it's never too late to start either. Like it, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to – make your dreams come true i don't care if you're 60 70 years old doesn't matter just go after it everybody's got to start somewhere and it's it's hard sometimes but the hard times when you you keep going it's worth it it's a lot worth it in those times than it would be if you're sitting on your deathbed wishing you would have went for it so i love it man and on that note peace one love